Earlier this year, we connected with a lovely lady on Instagram named Gwen. She's the owner of Blessings on State Bed and Breakfast, and she helped make our three-part documentary series on Jacksonville, Illinois possible. While we were in Jacksonville, we, of course, stayed at her stunning B&B, and y'all, it was one of the most incredible experiences we've ever had. And with a name like Blessings, why were we even surprised? We feel like we want to be a blessing to others. That's what we're here for. And certainly the Lord has blessed us. We've had some troubled times, but the Lord has been very gracious to us. And I feel like even having this wonderful home is a blessing and this town is a blessing and our friends are blessings and our guests are blessings. So it kind of is a, a two-way thing where we are blessed, but we also want to be a blessing to others. Blessings has two suites. Serenity can sleep too with the one queen bed. It has an ensuite bathroom and a private sitting room and to make it even cozier, an all-season fireplace. We stayed in the Tranquility Suite, which can actually sleep three. It has a king bed in the main bedroom and a day bed in the sitting room. Tranquility also has an ensuite bathroom and it's absolutely stunning. It also has an all-season fireplace and lots of storage with that added sitting room. Both suites come with plush robes and fluffy towels. You also have access to the 24-hour hot and cold beverages and snacks, which are located right outside the Tranquility Suite. Everything about Blessings is soothing and welcoming, and quite honestly, it's the perfect B&B. A lot of that can be attributed to Miss Gwen's vision for the B&B. She knew what she wanted from the get-go. We had looked at a couple of other places. One was actually a turnkey bed and breakfast being offered, and another was a big estate out in the country here in Jacksonville. And I had been watching this online. It was staged and it was just so cute. And it was in the historic district. The realtor did not encourage us to think that we could put a bed and breakfast in the historic district. And so we finally got to see it. And as I walked through, my buddy was with us who had seen some of these other properties and Glenn was with us. I mean, we were all three together. And when we got to the back porch, my buddy Terry looked at me and said, this is the one, isn't it? And I said, how do you know that? And she said, I can see it in your eyes and your cheeks are red. And I remember saying, it's 129 <laughs> degrees and I'm sure my cheeks are red. <laughs> but this was the house. I loved the wrap porch. I mean, that to me was so welcoming and I could certainly feature the white wicker and we've got two settings here so that you can be on a kind of a private side on George's side. That's gonna always probably be George's house to me next door. And then the front's the street side where the dog walkers and the strollers wave and chat. And it's just a great porch to start with. And, you know, we have chandeliers in every room and we have five fireplaces. And it just, it was my house. From the minute you walk in, you feel loved. That's ingrained into Gwen and her husband, Glenn. So it's second nature for them to treat their guests like family. I come in with different experiences mm -hmm. that I bring with me. So my husband and I honeymooned in Canada and we stayed in the fancy high-priced hotels and to balance that out, we stayed in the lower price bed and breakfast. That really was a terrific experience because we stayed in a place like this and we stayed in a converted garage. And those innkeepers at both places were lovely. I mean, just wonderful. Meals were different in each place. Furnishings were different in each place, but the experience is what I loved. And I grew up in a home with open doors. And people came, stayed with us. We had a man from Peru who stayed with us for six weeks one time. We had missionaries and pastors who visited and they stayed with us. And my aunt and my grandma, it, everybody just kind of had that hospitality gene, I consider it. So I came by that kind of through the Henderson line. <laughs> everybody just has open doors. And I, you know, I can remember my uncle cooking Denver omelets for us when we were visiting one time. I just have memories of church dinners and being in Sunday dinners in private homes. People who maybe didn't have a fancy home and maybe who didn't have a lot of money, but I was raised feeling welcome, feeling part of the family, even though you were not necessarily part of the family by birth. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to me to extend that to others. If you could meet Gwen and talk with her for just five minutes, you would see immediately that her heart is for people and for building relationships. 
She would give the shirt off her back if she knew it would improve your life in any way. That's one reason why Blessings works with B&Bs for Vets. I became involved with B&Bs for Vets several years ago. It was started by an innkeeper from West Virginia. And she just sort of, I think, started doing it on her own and it became a national program and it's kind of gone through some transitions over the years. The first year I signed up, I got signed up beautifully. And I thought, the idea is you give at least one room night to a veteran on Veterans Day. I figured I could do that, no problem. So I signed up, well, I got eight calls. And I couldn't figure out how to turn it off and I wasn't turning anybody down. So we hosted eight, it's either veterans or active military here. And so we hosted eight that first year. And the next year I thought, well, that worked out okay. And so I just kind of left it the week open to do that. And over time I thought, you know, I am donating these room nights and the breakfasts so they have no expenses when they come to town. What if I could get dinner for them? Or what if I could provide flowers for them? So I went on Facebook and I said, hey friends, and I'm telling you, I'm sitting on a stack of money right now because the people have prepared to contribute this year for our BNBs for Vets. And I had one in particular whose wife said, he has PTSD and could we have breakfast, not with others? Absolutely. We, we have only two suites, so they already have the privacy kind of inherent with the stay if they want it. And we don't make anybody have breakfast with another. Any, anytime we don't do that, because we can serve with just two suites. We can stagger it and serve individually. But then when he did have breakfast, he talked to me. And she caught me later and she said, you're the first person that he's had a conversation with. And that's special to me, to think about that. And we're not the only ones who feel loved by Miss Gwen. Everyone who visits experiences that same warmth. The charm here is beautiful. And you get to really feel the sense of love here. It's not just the name of blessing, but there is something more to that. There's something spiritual. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a frame sentence, a, a, a saying on the wall that says, you come as guests and you leave as friends. I think that's it. But uh, it's very true, not just a saying. Building those relationships is the mission of Blessings on State, and the love goes both ways. Gwen is actually a breast cancer survivor, and she continued to host people at Blessings during her battle, and that gave guests a unique opportunity to give some care back to her. I remember when I was doing chemo, they said the blessing at the table with me sitting there and they prayed for me and the gentleman who was praying his voice broke and he couldn't complete and the brother-in-law stepped in and finished the prayer well i mean i was all but a puddle at the table but we have those strong relationships because i think there's a skill in assessing how much time do they want to spend with you what are their needs i have to be honest Usually, I'm pretty nervous when we go to a new B&B. If you've been subscribed to us for a while or you know me in real life, you probably know that I have severe social anxiety. And it's kind of a shocker that I do this job, but I love it anyway. But I'm constantly worried about putting on my best face and being as perfect as I can be. But when I walked into Blessings, everything felt different. I felt so relaxed and at home, so it just felt natural for me to cozy up on the couch in the parlor on our first night. That's exactly what Gwen wants people to do. And so it's kind of fun reaching people of all ages and welcoming people of all ages. Mm -hmm. I've had young ones come in and, you know, the wife has probably dragged the husband. <laughs> and he's thinking he's going to the Bates Motel. He doesn't have any idea what it's like to stay here. And it's not my great Aunt Daisy's house. I mean, we have what we call comfortably elegant furnishings. Mm -hmm. There are some antiques, but they are certainly not all antiques. And if you need to put your feet up, you can put your feet up. I watched you get comfortable on the sofa the other day, and I just have to tell you, that makes my heart happy, Jennifer. Yeah. It gives me a thrill when people come in and feel comfortable getting tucked all up in the sofa. I mean, that's just, that's how I want you to feel. I want you to feel like you're comfortable and part of the family and can just get as situated as you want while you're here. But enough with that mushy stuff. 
Owning a B&B also comes with its humorous moments, and Miss Gwynn shared quite the doozy with us at breakfast. We have often wedding couples come in after the wedding, and so we have everything set. We invite them to drop their bags during the day, have a bridesmaid or somebody come over. Sometimes they come here and have their wedding pictures taken here and they can just leave things then. But we invite them to leave their bags and we take them up to their suite and we have special things we do for the wedding couples and we leave a little rose petal trail for them to find their way because I don't stay up to greet them at 11 or midnight. We just allow them the privacy of a self check-in. And so one night I was wearing one of the hotel robes that had been retired. Lovely and full coverage. But I thought at the last second, about, you know, maybe 10 o'clock, I was going to bed. I was just going to run across and double check that tranquility suite, make sure everything was the way we wanted it. I went in the sleeping room, the bedroom. I went in the bathroom. I went in the sitting room. I was back in the bathroom and I heard them come in the door. <laughs> I didn't know which way to run. I mean, it was like, I felt like I love Lucy. It was like if there was a drop down ladder for a fire escape, I'd have been going out that sitting room. And I, I couldn't hide under the bed because it's a trundle. And I just, I didn't know what to do and I'm in the bathroom. And there, and I hear her say, Oh, just rip it. Oh, and I think, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And so I very sheepishly to say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I'm in here. Oh, I was just shook. And so they were very apologetic because they were an hour earlier than they thought they'd ever be there and they just felt like it was entirely their fault that I was in their suite when they got here. And I just was horrified. And so I left there in my robe walking out past them and they'd already locked the door. So then it was a struggle with me trying to get through the door because I was so shook <laughs> up I couldn't get out of the room. And I finally got out and I was just horrified. <laughs> and I had to see them at breakfast, of course. So. It was just painful. And so at the breakfast, they said, I want to explain about the whole, whole situation last night. You know, they came in earlier than they thought and whatever. And I said, well, I, I was kind of gonna be okay until I heard you say, just rip it. <laughs> and they explained that the hook and I had given on her gown. And so they had sewed her in. So instead of the hook and eye connecting it, it had just the threads and there was no way to get it out without just ripping those little threads. Oh, my horror. I just can't even tell you. That was probably the most embarrassing funny one I ever had. That is adorable. But there have been many other funny ones for sure. Awesome. Moral of the story, Blessings on State has quickly become one of our favorite spots. Not only is the B&B gorgeous, and Miss Gwen prepares a fantastic breakfast. But we felt so loved and cared for. And guys, we cried in the car on the way to our next destination. We truly felt like Gwen and everyone at Blessings cared for us as people, not just as bloggers who were coming in to check out the bed and breakfast. That feeling is priceless, y'all. So thank you a million times over, Gwen, for letting us stay with you. We can't wait to come back and spend some more time in your home, in your town, and with your people of Jacksonville. You're a gem of a human being, and we are so blessed to know you. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.